Right. Second part of the short story. Now in this section, uh, we are going to discuss how nature, how nature reacts or responds to the student's problem of finding a red rose and its behavior. Now all natural things, animals are personified here, personified. Now let's see uh, how they respond, react against the student. Now, why is he weeping? Go to the book page 21, why is he weeping? Now, who asked this question? Green lizard, green lizard. Now the green lizard questions, ah, why does this boy cry, keep crying? But he does not wait for the answer. As he ran past uh, him, asked the little green lizard uh, with a tail in the air, right? Ran past him means past the student. Now, when a green lizard passing the student, he just questioned, why is he weeping? Then the butterfly answers, why indeed? I do not know. I do not know who was fluttering. Fluttering means flying about after a sunbeam. Sunbeam means sun's light, sunlight. Why indeed? Which way the daisy? Daisy is a flower. You see, green lizard, butterfly, daisy, they are all personified. They speak like human. Uh, to her neighbor. Now, this story is like a fairy tale, Surangana Kata, like a fairy tale, but it has some truth to his neighbor in a soft, low voice. Only the nightingale knows the answer. The green lizard, butterfly, daisy, they do not know why the young student cries. Only the nightingale knows the reason. Hmm? Knows the reason. Right. Because the nightingale is concerned about the young student's problem. Ah. The nightingale says he is weeping for a red rose. Ah, for a red rose, they cried. The daisy, butterfly, and green lizard, they all cried, shouted. Hmm, for a red rose, how very ridiculous. Ridiculous. Joking. It's a joke. Hmm? Nonsense. It's, it's a nonsense. Uh, and the little lizard, hmm, who was something of a cynic. Uh, cynic means who never see uh, goodness of anything, a cynic character, uh, pessimistic character, hmm, a cynic, laughed outright. Uh, he laughed at this idea. That's why cynical people, they are very critical. Uh, they laugh at others' ideas, cynic, uh, non didana, right? But the nightingale understood the secret of the student's sorrow. She sat silent, sat silent, alliteration. She sat silent in the oak tree and thought about the mystery of love. 
Now only the nightingale is concerned about a student's problem, but no other creatures are concerned. The green lizard laughs, the daisy does not know, the butterfly does not know the reason, but the nightingale knows the reason and she thinks of the student's situation. This is her good character. She has very sensitive heart, note it down. The nightingale is a person with a sensitive heart, sympathetic heart, sympathetic heart. Suddenly, she spread her brown wings for flight. For flight means for flight. Now, what is the idea here? She flew away. She went away and soared, flied into the air. Air means sky. She passed through the groove. She went through the groove. Groove means collection of trees. Mm. Through the trees, like a shadow. Now you see the simile. Like a shadow, simile. What is the idea? This nightingale is very light character, light. Hmm? Very subtle, very soft character, like a shadow. And like a shadow, repetition is a technique. The same simile is repeated. It's a repetition, a technique. Not down all techniques, uh, all poetic techniques are used in this short story. Why? Oscar Wilde is a poet too. Oscar Wilde can a poet can it. Therefore, this short story is written in a poetic language. Another technique, written in poetic language, not it down. The short story is written in poetic language. Language is poetic. Like a shadow, she sailed across the garden. She went, sailed means went, like a boat, like a ship. She gracefully, beautifully uh, went across the garden. Now, what is she going to do? In the center of the grass plot, in the middle of the grass bed, plot means bed, grass bed, there was standing a beautiful rose tree. Now she goes to a rose tree. Now, really, she is going to look for a red rose. The nightingale is going to look for a red rose. And when she saw it, she flew over to it and lit upon, it means sat on a spray, a branch. Spray means little branch. Now the nightingale begins her mission, in my double S I mission. What is this mission? To look for a red rose. To help the young student enjoy his love. Now she is looking for a red rose, but the student does not do anything. Ah. Give me a red rose. She speaks to the rose tree. And I will sing you my sweetest song. Now you see, the nightingale has no money, no nothing to give. She says, okay, if you give me a red rose, I will give you my sweet songs. Sweet songs is the one and only valuable thing she has. Now she is ready to offer her sweet songs and to buy a red rose. But the tree shook its head, no. The rose tree says, my roses are white. I am not a red rose tree. I am a white rose tree. Sorry, the nightingale. Sorry, nightingale. My roses are as white as the form of the sea. Form. Ah, form of the sea. Form means, you know, that froth or uh, snow. or happy penaki and mudu pena. Ah of the sea, and whiter than the snow upon the mountains. Ah, my roses are whiter than the snow, snowy white. Sorry, nightingale, I am not red. 
but go to my brother who grows round the old sundial. There is my brother near the sundial. Sundial means a clock. Now near the old sun clock, there is my brother. Perhaps he will give you, my brother will give you what you want. Now you see how nature supports. Hmm? Now this is a coexistence, living together in nature. They help each other. Nature's elements help each other. That is the idea here. Now this white rose tree supports the nightingale to find out a red rose tree. Ah. So the nightingale flew over to the rose tree that was growing around the old sundial. Ah. Then the nightingale ah, goes to the sundial. There is a rose tree. There is a rose tree. She speaks the same words. Give me a red rose. Give me a red rose. I will sing you my sweetest song. Ah, the same offering, same request. But Nightingale is disappointed. She loses her hope. Why? The rose tree shook its head. No, no, Nightingale. I am not a red rose tree. I am very sorry, Nightingale. I am not a red rose tree. My roses are yellow. I have yellow roses. <laughs> now, what can she do? Hmm. Now, the first rose tree is white. Second rose tree is yellow. It answered, my roses are as yellow as the hair, like the hair of Mermaid, mermaid. You know mermaid? He's a creature. Half woman, half fish living in the sea. Dear Kinduri. Half woman, half fish. Now this mermaid has yellow hair. Ah, my roses are as yellow as mermaid's hair, who sits upon an amber throne. Amber means again yellow. Now, this mermaid is seated on the yellow throne. And my roses are yellower than the daffodils. Daffodil is a flower, a yellow flower. Yellow flower, daffodil flower. My roses are yellow than daffodils that blooms, that grows in the meadow, in the grassland. Meadow means grassland. Before the mower, mower means the grass cutter, grass cutter. Before the grass cutter comes with his scythe. Scythe means the knife or cutter. Now the uh, yellow rose tree says, I am very sorry, Nightingale. I do not have red roses. I have only yellow roses. But go to my brother, my brother, who grows beneath the student's window. Ah, near the student's window, near the student's window, there is my brother. Ah, and perhaps he will give you what you want. Sometimes he will give you what you want. Ah, go to that brother. Now the nightingale goes to the third rose tree, third one. Now third rose tree is by the student's window. So the nightingale flew over to the rose tree that was growing beneath the student's window. She says the same thing. Give me a red rose, she cried, and I will sing you my sweetest song. But the rose tree shook its head. He said, no, I'm very sorry, nightingale. Very sorry, very sorry. My roses are red. I have red roses. I am a red rose tree. As red as. My roses are as red as the feet of the dove. 
You see the simile. A lot of similes are used in this short story. Feet of the dove. Like the feet of a pigeon. Dove means pigeon. Uh, like the feet of a pigeon. My roses are red. Sometimes my roses are redder than the fans of corals. Fans of coral. Coral flowers. Red coral flowers in the sea. My roses are redder than the red coral flowers. Fans of coral mean coral flowers in the red. That wave and wave, that shake, wave and wave means shake in the ocean cavern, in the ocean cavern. Right, cavern means a cave. Depth of the ocean. But the winter underlying these parts are very important. But the winter, winter, now winter, the red rose tree says, the winter has chilled my veins, frozen, chilled means frozen, made ice. My veins, my blood, mm, veins means blood and blood vessels. Because of winter, my blood is frozen. I am half dead. Now winter is very ferocious, dangerous. This is nature's dangerous aspect, winter. Nature's dangerous aspect, malevolent aspect. And the frost, frost means snow or ice, has nipped my buds, destroyed. Nip means destroyed, mm, broken. Mm. Has broken my buds, my little buds, leaves. Buds means leaves. And the storm, the terrible storm, storm means wind has broken my branches. Storm has broken my branches. Now, the rose tree mentions, I am very weak fellow nightingale. I will have no roses at all this year. This year I will have no roses. I am a weak fellow. Nature has punished me. Nature has almost killed me. Now nightingale is disappointed again. Why? She finds a red rose tree, but there are no roses. But she wants a red rose. She wants a red rose. She is very determined character. The nightingale is a determined character. Write down the comment. The nightingale is a determined character. She wants a red rose. She does not give up this. Now she says, one red rose is all I want. I want only one red rose, my dear. I want only one red rose. Only one red rose. Is there no way by which I can get it? Finally, Nightingale asks, is there no way? No other method to find a red rose? The Nightingale urges, pleads. Finally, the red rose tree, it is also kind-hearted supportive. The red rose tree is also kind-hearted and supportive. Hmm? Now the red rose tree says, there is a way. Yes, Nightingale, there is one way. But it is so terrible. It is so terrible. It is so dangerous. Horrific, terrible means. Very horrific. I dare not to tell it to you. I cannot tell it to you. Dare not means cannot. I cannot tell it to you. I cannot describe it to you. There is only one way. Yes, there is only one way. Tell it to me. The nightingale says, I am not afraid. Yes, tell it to me. I am not afraid. I want only a red rose. I want only a red rose. Underline, if you want a red rose, said the red tree, you must build it out of music by moonlight and stain it with your own heart's blood. Underline. Now, this is the terrible way of making a red rose. What is this terrible way? Horrific way. If you want a red rose, Nightingale, if you want a red rose, you must build it. You must make it out of music. You have to give your music under moonlight. 
moonlight means at night you can think of that image at night you have to give a music and stain it stain means color you have to color the rose you have to color the rose with your own blood you have to give me your blood you have to give me your blood now what is the idea the nightingale has to sacrifice her life give her life for a red rose hmm it's a great price she has to give her life for a red rose will she do it will you do it will you give your life for someone else no we humans do not do so because we love our life we are very selfish we are very selfish lovers to our life but the nightingale will she do now the rose tree further says you must sing to me you must keep singing to me with your breast breast means chest chest this part you must sing keep in your chest against a thorn thorn means the needle ross needle sharp ross needle you have to keep your heart on the ross needle thorn all night long you must sing to me keep in your heart on the ross thorn you must sing to me and the ross thorn must pierce pierce means goes into your heart drills your heart goes into your heart and your life blood your blood must flow come into my veins my veins means my body and become mine your blood must become mine i will come to life you will go to death i will come to life you will go to death would you like it nightingale would you like to sacrifice your life for me now the nightingale is in great trouble what can she do will she agree i can wait yes let's see death is a great price death is a great value to pay for a red rose to red rose death is a great value cried the nightingale and life is very dear to all everybody loves life very dear means loving everybody loves life life is pleasant life is pleasant it is pleasant to sit in the green wood now nah. if we live we can enjoy green wood green wood means here nature and to watch the sun we can see the sun ah uh, running round the world in his chariot of gold chariot means cart cart of gold gold and cart now we can see the sun running round the world in his golden cart and we can see the moon in her chariot of silver pearl in a pearl chariot we can see the moon going round the world what is this we can enjoy nature if we live and sweet is the hawthorn hawthorn is some kind of flower hawthorn scent sweetness is very sweet and sweet are the bluebells bluebells are also flowers we can enjoy the sweetness of bluebells that hide in the valley and the heath heath means soft wind we can feel the soft wind that blows on the hill underline yet love is better than life underline yet love is better than life what is the heart of a bird compared to the heart of a man now finally the nightingale comes to a decision what is the decision love is better than life love is valuable than my life and what is my heart heart of a bird compared to the heart of a man man's heart is very important very valuable 
but the bird's heart is not so valuable. Now, the nightingale decides to offer her life for mankind. This is nature's sacrifice. This is nature's sacrifice for mankind. You know, nature makes a lot of sacrifice. Nature loves mankind. Nature gives us food. Nature gives us protection. The nightingale represents that nature. Mm. Nature's love for mankind. That is ideal. That is unselfish. Nature's love for mankind. Unselfish. Unconditional. Mm. Nature gives us food without any condition. Nature gives us air without any condition. You understand? Nature gives us water without any condition. That is love. Now, the nightingale practically shows nature's love for mankind. Now she is ready to sacrifice her life for mankind. Right? Now, that is the end of the second part of the short story. That is the end of the second part of the short story. Please draw a line here. Right? Now, let's go to comment section. Let's write down the comment on the second part. Right. Part two, second part, comment. Write down. In this section of the short story, in this section of the short story, Oscar Wilde, Oscar Wilde, Oscar Wilde presents, P -R -E -S -E -N -T -S, presents how nature, how nature responds. R E S P O N D S responds, responds to the student's case, to the student case, to the student's case. All nature's element around the student all nature's element around the student are personified are personified by the writer by the writer the green lizard the butterfly and the daisy All here, all here, H E A R here, the young students weeping, the young students weeping, but they fail to realize. But they fail to realize the reason for his weeping. The reason for his weeping.
they are not much concerned about they are not much concerned about and sensitive they are much they are not much concerned about and sensitive to to the young students the young students problem problem next paragraph the nightingale the nightingale's reaction the nightingale's reaction to the young student is quite different from others quite different from others the writer the writer makes the nightingale the writer makes the nightingale as a symbol of nature's nature's benevolence b e n e b o l e n c e b e n e b o l e n c e benevolence on mankind she is loving and sensitive she is loving and sensitive full stop she decides to she decides to help the young student find in a red rose and she begins her mission and she begins her mission of finding a red rose finding a red rose finding a red rose right that is the end of uh that part of the comment we will discuss further and write down our comment further in our next session in our next session